e para discutir como To discuss how to foster social inclusion and diversity in the context of entrepreneurship while highlighting challenges and opportunities to accelerate this process in Brazil, we would like to invite to stage Rafaela Bassetti, CEO and founder of Wishy, and Ata Malheiros, national coordinator of the uh, Feminine Entrepreneurship Program in Sebrae, Joselito Crispin. ESG Director of Akin Tech, Fernanda Ribeiro, co-founder of Conta Black, Eduardo Machado, Chairman of Badeski. Our moderator will be Thiago Tobias, uh, an attorney and master in public policy for FGV. Mr. Thiago, you have the floor. Good afternoon, everyone. I can see you all in the screen, Dr. Crispin, uh, other friends. It is um, a great pleasure to moderate this 2030 uh, agenda of the ABD Forum. I think one important thing the system can make is to induce the implementation of public policy, especially. Uh, aimed at diversity and social inclusion. We have several legal frameworks, constitutional frameworks, uh, legislative frameworks. So we have a historical debt with all of the excluded groups, uh, blacks, women, indigenous groups, uh, people with disabilities. This is a challenge. We are all learning how to leverage. And the SDGs and uh, SEGs uh, have this responsibility. Uh, when we talk about entrepreneurship, uh, well, I can see the participation of several digital banks and uh, we have 60 million people who don't have bank accounts, They ha but they still, they have moved in 2019 1 trillion reais, they represent an, uh, an economy of 700 billion reais, so there's a lot of wealth, a lot of ideas, and a lot of initiatives in terms of diversity, inclusion, in the peripheral areas of Brazil. So today we'll be talking to Rafaela, Renata, Fernanda, Eduardo and Joselito. I'll start off by giving the floor to Rafaela. Rafaela, you have seven minutes to present. Okay, thank you for inviting me. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here participating in this conversation. Well, it's, not, uh, it's impossible to make a single presentation about such a deep uh, theme, but I would like to bring you a little bit of my perspective. I'm a fan of everything you've built. Uh, Tiago, this, this is a very amazing project that, that deserves to be replicated and invested in. Uh, considering what you have uh, said, I usually start by saying that startups exist and new businesses c uh, emerge and technology is so powerful. Uh, we are living in the technological age and the largest companies in the world are technology based. But f and all of that is for a very simple reason. These companies are building the future. So they uh, came into being to construct, to build the world where we uh, w live. And uh, it's a big problem when many people are left be left behind. This is a problem of entrepreneurship, not only in Brazil. These are companies and people and realities that are building a future um, to which many people do not belong. And we call them minorities, but these are not uh, mathematical minorities. These are majorities. These are, un these are groups that are underrepresented. And it's very important to look at them not only with the perspective, uh, the sub subjective perspective of the discourse of equality, but from an economic point of view. We are uh, missing out on a lot of economic value generating GDP and results when we leave so many people out. And this is a chain that uh, neglects solutions for these people that could uh, raise them to another condition. So. We're missing out the opportunity to place them in the in the labor market. It's always the same people hiring uh, uh, pe other people and hiring the, their 
similar people. Uh, so we, we are leaving a huge stake of the populations outside of this construction of futures. This is why it's very important to talk about diversity and its countless uh, areas. Well, in terms of gender, we discuss a lot about gender equality in the labor market, in terms of public policies as well, and at the level of the legislative range as well. We've uh, just uh, gone through a discussion about targets to, for the hiring of women, but we're trying to solve the problem top down instead of solving it bottom up. Instead of discussing how many women are in board of directors of open companies, we can discuss how many women are uh, creating their own businesses and uh, having the opportunity to make their companies into leaders in the market. Women detain half the businesses, uh, the formal businesses in Brazil. This, uh, represent, this means that we are entrepreneurs, we have formal businesses, but when we look at technology, we represent less than 5% of startup founders. We are still a lot uh, in traditional economy and participating very little uh, in the construction of the future. So the participation of women in the startup system is very low. Very few women are hired to work in these uh, areas. So when leadership is not diverse, the companies are not diverse, and many problems are left unattended. So we. Uh, are not building solutions to these publics. So the entrepreneurs tend to act upon the pain they know. So it's a very deep spiral and if we, you don't look at it very carefully and especially in terms of financial investment you cannot uh, solve this problem. Imagine if these entrepreneurs were qualified but if they were also uh, recipients of investment so that they c could build their own future. So this is just uh, fo some food for thought that I uh, usually start with. But thank you for the opportunity of being here. Thank you, Rafaela. Data uh, considering uh, women and gender uh, is very interesting because most of the households are led by women. The vast majority of them are single mothers that uh, have the responsibility of working and educating their children. and. Uh, Technology uh, allows women to work from home and to uh, be closer to their kids, and uh, it's also a great opportunity. So I'll give the floor to Renata Maleres, who is the national coordinator of the Feminine Entrepreneurship uh, Program of Sebrae. There's a phrase, uh, the head thinks where the feet uh, stand. And uh, Sebrae has a, a good, good work with entre female entrepreneurs in Brazil. So you have seven minutes, Renata. Good afternoon, Tiago. I uh, really like data, Tiago. Uh, well, I have a piece of data, which is uh, childhood. Uh, so the childhood is the ground uh, that we stand on th through our whole lives. So uh, what is the difference between being a man and being a woman? It's, isn't it difficult to everyone? in terms of entrepreneurship. Men also face difficulties to, uh, in terms of entrepreneurship. Why are we talking about uh, entrepreneurship for women? Well, this is an excellent question that uh, motivates our activity in Sebrae. We have uh, the, a, a program called Sebrae Dallas dedicated to female entrepreneurship. And uh, the answer is yes, it is difficult to everyone. Um, but for women, it's even more difficult, and the reason is cultural. Uh, until 1962, there was a law in Brazil in which the, through which the husband could prevent a woman from working uh, outside. So, so you can see the cultural barriers we uh, face when we see intersectionality, when we incorporate race, uh, people with disabilities, L LGBTs, uh, class. Well, it becomes very complex, but seven minutes is not enough to address all of that. I'd just like to call your attention to the two greatest uh, challenges that uh, culture poses to women, which is the dream and the time. Culture has hindered the, the dream of young girls 
this is why I said that childhood is the ground where we stand through our whole lives and culture hinders the time of adult women some research by Sabrai really show that 50% of businesses uh, created in Brazil are uh, created by women and the, the other half by men so it's uh, well balanced in that regard we women are 16% more with more schooling than men but companies led by women make 28% less than companies led by men in all sectors. There is a gap in women in innovation and all this is related to childhood and limiting beliefs and unconscious biases that are reinforced by gender stereotypes. So let's, let's make it straightforward. When we are girls, we hear, that's not for girls. That's not for someone like you. No, that's not a way, that's not a nice way for a girl to speak. Boys are also taking on these limiting beliefs, such as not to show their emotions, such as men don't cry. And that's weak. So these are all those things that the family, school, TV, that they influence us, influence every uh, children, and we carry this into adulthood. Why so few girls in mathematics, for instance? We always hear that men are better at maths, and so we give cars, and we encourage abstract thinking and logical thought to boys and girls are engaged in family, taking care of the family and the home and so on. We need adults that are competent in all these areas. So the dream to see and believe representativeness matters for our children to be able to dream that they can become the CEO of a bank, senator, representative, astronaut. So, Renata, Fernanda, if we, as children, if we don't see women astronauts or women driving trucks, we're not going to dream about it. Eduardo, as a child, if he never saw a man dancing ballet, for instance, and uh, so all this is very important and how do we address this with dialogue representation and so this is all very important in addressing the dream of young girls and what about the time of adult women it's easy to look at our everyday lives for cultural reasons the tasks of care of children, of elderly people, of uh, domestic chores, it's most if mostly women. So women dedicate 17% less time to their companies than men. And women dedicate the double the number of hours to domestic chores than men in Brazil. So we have 24 hours in a day. And what do you do with these hours? is important so time is money and so why do we make 22 percent less than companies led by men we need to talk to people in our home so is it fair for only the women to dedicate time to cleaning the house daycare services parental leave for fathers and mothers, anything that can address this unbalanced time that is dedicated to domestic chores and also create spaces for children in your branches. I'm talking about a little table, some crayons and some paper. Entrepreneurs tell me I don't go to courses because I have no place to leave my child. I would love to live in a country 
with daycare centers and uh, a country where children have their father's name on their birth certificates, we can adapt our offices, our institutions with special spaces for children to allow women to access these spaces. Have you ever tried to have lunch with a child crying beside you? Have you ever tried to request credit with a child crying beside you? So we want to make life easier for men and women. And so we need to make these little big changes. One of them is to bring the topic to the table. Many people believe that this is not a problem, so we need to acknowledge that this is a problem, and that in itself is a major step. Renata, uh, congratulations for your thoughts. We need a lot of dialogue on the challenges of women and specificities of diversity. This is a very rich agenda, but we need to build the agenda, the agenda with the SDG challenges, but we need to create space for implementation and monitoring so that the system can monitor everything that is being implemented to bring to light the good practices because good examples are very important. So based on the multiple examples we have in the country, we will be able to build better experiences. I'd like to invite Eduardo Machado from Badesk, Santa Catarina. He has great experience in the area of entrepreneurship. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here talking to you. Perhaps one of the, big, the most difficult tasks that I'm going to have as a, is to speak after Rafaela and Renata and everything that they brought to the table. And this is so true that in 47 years of the development agency here in Santa Catarina, it is the first time that we have a woman manager, a woman leading the agency we have. a woman heading our agency here in our state. And so we are very pleased with this, and I am sure that the level of discussion is much higher than when we only have men in the discussion. Although this is true, then we uh, and we are working on the specific credit to cater to gender and diversity. I am going to focus on what we've been doing for some time, actually since 99, when Badesk, thanks to a public policy, decided to support entrepreneurs that are under the basic level of the entrepreneurship pyramid. I'm talking about really micro entrepreneurs from popcorn uh, stalls to uh, the owner of a beauty parlor who wants to increase her shop. So I'm talking about creating wealth, people who create wealth, but would not have access without this policy, would not have access to grow their business. And so they depend on generation of wealth and cash in order to grow without a policy such as the one we have here in Santa Catarina. This is a model that was not created here in Santa Catarina or Brazil. It is a model inspired on the classic banking of the poor and that inspired all around the world different experiences. 
And thankfully, leaders at the time, I'm in back in 1999, they brought the model here. And so just to share a few numbers, we are talking about, well, when we talk about a future agenda for fostering development, it's important to understand what took place in history, an effort that was not in vain and that had huge impact on the lives of these people. We're talking about almost 1,200,000 credit operations since 1999. Let's go back. How does the system work? Badeski, as a development agency, through this public policy, incentivized the creation and establishment of some other institutions. These were civil society public interest organizations today. These are, well, so these institutions were incentivized with through credit systems in order to format this model and also loaned capital to these institutions so that they could reach micro 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 entrepreneurs and there to multiply capital with them for them the program is a success along all this time since 99 until today we of around 210 million reais loaned to these institutions. At the time, there were 19. There might be more now. So the organization of the institutions, they became more professional. Many of them no longer require public credit exclusively, they are able to raise international funds. And these 210 million have become in practice in, into credit on the ground of more than f over 4 billion, 4 billion, 4.3 billion reais. And so this is real significant multiplication, taking credit, as I said in the beginning, to those who otherwise would not have access to traditional credit because they don't have the minimum organization to go to a traditional bank or they, might, they don't have time for that because they need to make money. They can't take the time to go looking for a financial institution. While these institutions have credit branches, credit agencies that go to the entrepreneurs, they visit, they advise, and so it's not just credit, there is professionalization of the model. Today, this active portfolio with more than 400 million reais in the economy in 2010, 2011, when we reviewed the model and conducted an evaluation of the impact that this had on regional development, we could see that there was a persistent problem, which is informality. These people, they took credit, they made their businesses grow with this credit, but they were still informal. So Santa Catarina, created a supplementary program to this microcredit program called Zero Interest Microcredit. So it was credit of up to 5,000 reais, and the micro-entrepreneurs then could take this credit for his or her business with specific, a specific uh, purpose or non-specific purpose. But there was a condition which was formalization. So the entrepreneur would have to formalize the business, register the business. So since 2011, when the program was established, we conducted 130 million 
operations with the formalization of the of the same number of enterprises reaching 426 million reais and so we are talking here about very significant impact and we all know that the formalization of a business brings about some benefits and guarantees which are very important especially during the pandemic that we just experienced because many of these people they lost their usual income that they had before the pandemic and so we have a public program at state level and perhaps this well this was this could be a way to think of the whole system from north to south east to west a program that might benefit perhaps through subsidies or incentives taking more credit with more competitiveness at lower rates to more entrepreneurs who move the economy and promote this development now which is so needed in their own uh, local realities thank you uh, thank you Eduardo I think this is a very good practical experience Brazil is uh, internationally recognized by uh, or for its uh, social policies and the micro micro credit experiences come to leverage social policies people want to work want equity want to promote uh, their businesses at large and and this line of uh, action the Brazil has created a program to make the funding mechanisms more flexible because banks cannot reach everyone but in the have created open banking so these uh, banks are being created all over the country and an interesting experience uh, by uh, Fernanda Ribeiro she is a co-founder co of Conta Black Fernanda, uh, hello good afternoon everyone I want to start by thanking for the invitation it's very interesting to be here with uh, Renata and half a Eduardo to so many dear friends to address these challenges it's also a huge challenge to be the last to speak after hearing from such brilliant pre presentations I don't want to be repetitive but I'd like to bring another point here I, to think diversity as a factor to potentialize our industries. Tiago opened up uh, with a really positive perspective bringing the data so interesting data of uh, the circulation of money within the communities when we if you divide that by race the financial movement of the black uh, population in the last few years has an important role in terms of the GDP and uh, I'd like to invite us all to think about diversity when it is properly addressed these businesses are uh, benefited from it because um, while well, I speak as uh, in the position of a black women, woman so we open businesses in a context of scarcity so we develop the gift to bring abundance to a an extremely scarce scenario and that shouldn't be the case and I want to also bring some uh, provocative points when we think about policies and affirmative policies we're not creating products and services that reinforce the stigmas that we uh, address so much there's a recent example a while ago I was talking to Leandro who is an associate of Tiago of the FinTech and we were talking about the difficulty in accessing credit for uh, startups founded uh, by black uh, people so when we go uh, through a round of pitch we hear very racist questions we go through 
a very embarrassing situations and sometimes we uh, get feedback that is uh, very inadequate uh, for example oh this type of business will not will never uh, work when the fact is that there are several businesses founded by the white people which already have millions of reais invested so my provocative thought is how are we looking at diversity as uh, as a positive point and when how can we develop affirmative policies that contemplate uh, entrepreneurs in several uh, steps of their trajectories a small entrepreneur needs uh, nano credit but when we're talking about startups we also need to develop affirmative policies that uh, meet uh, those needs and I have a very positive case to bring forth when this diversity is potentialized it changes the market if we look at the market of cosmetic industry ten years ago there were no products no cosmetics um, meeting the demands from the black population so uh, women needed to use natural products if they wanted to keep their uh, hair uh, in a, uh, as it as they are so uh, the there emerged a lot of products coming from black entrepreneurship trying to change the market years later so the industry sees it as a, a powerful element and it starts to invest so within my team I can, uh, almost don't see uh, products for uh, a straightening hair in uh, drug stores anymore this uh, shows how diversity is considered with no stereotyping and it has the power of changing the market this is no different from the banking or financial uh, contexts of course we have new technologies new functionalities which are quite effective but in terms of what Hafala said in the beginning of her presentation how are we building cultures that are really uh, inclusive and in which uh, everyone can participate we cannot ignore the fact that uh, the form of black people relate to money is completely different from non-blacks uh, how non-blacks deal with money and that has to do a lot with the universe they are inserted in the context of the structural barriers we cannot deny that we live in a country in which uh, structural racism crosses several uh, areas of society and I want to close uh, with a few proposals and how we how can we leverage these businesses once there is this discussion about the uh, yes uh, social SEG agendas and uh, so that we can uh, conducted the, the neck test uh, our time is up but in the final uh, considerations you can make you make your proposals uh, is, is that possible yes that's uh, perfectly possible so you've brought this rationale of diversity being uh, a leverage element uh, where I work we have the venture capital funds and we realize that the companies the funds that invest in uh, companies that work with diversity has been more profitable so these are interesting pieces of data that we have to bring forward I'll give the floor to Joselito Crispin who is from a favela Vincel bank AFV bank and uh, an ESG uh, advisor for fintech Joselito you have seven minutes good afternoon I'm a bit confused because I was just in a meeting with people from Mozambique and I didn't know the time zone uh, when I entered 
here uh, in this room people were very excited uh, well well I was uh, about to uh, fight with our moderator because you, you should never interrupt a black woman okay but, but, but it's okay she she was fine with it uh, where do I come from well I'm a stranger I'm getting uh, now to the universe of fintechs and funding. In 1991, well, I come from the slums of Alagados from Salvador, Bahia. And you know that from the song by Paralamas do Sucesso. 21, when I was 21, I started a social project with uh, Ken Collectors. And... Uh, neighbors were uh, complaining that the children were playing with the cans and it was really bothering them and they asked me to go there to end uh, the problem that did, well that didn't work because I actually joined them uh, and started playing music with the cans as well but uh, with all of this can uh, percussion uh, there was a story about uh, Maria Bethany and Caetano Veloso and then Alagados uh, came up and uh, interviewed me but everything was beautiful in Bahia the party so I told uh, the truth, actually, which was uh, the opposite to the propaganda and uh, to uh, what the stories were uh, telling about Bahia. So the project invited me to talk about social ecology. So as you was uh, uh, working with that in 1996 in Europe, and I worked with this for 30 years. And since I've been working with that for 30 years, I can say that the uh, police officer and the head of uh, drug trafficking went through my project uh, alike. So I have experience with many different types of people 24 hours a day. With the pandemic, there was a problem. I only talked to the youth in the past, but now there was no school, there was no NGO. Not even the police uh, was in the streets in the pandemic, only the youth. And now it made sense for their lives. and. Uh, so I started uh, for the first time in so many years. Uh, mothers came to me and said, "Well, I have two days. Uh, I don't. I don't have anything to eat for two days." Well, there have always been social difficulty, but many families, or almost all families, didn't know uh, what to do because they worked with food. Uh, they uh, did worked with cleaning. Uh, so this this ecosystem stopped. So how? What? What should they do? I called. Uh, a group of entrepreneurs and there was a friend from the financial area and they said well let us uh, make a, a, a crowdfunding online and let's purchase uh, some some food kits and uh, and I felt like uh, uh, I, I didn't quite like the idea why why don't we give them the money uh, so uh, the entrepreneurs were very well intentioned, but I was the only black man that they said, well, but this, uh, this, uh, and I said, this is my people. These are working people. These are hard workers. Uh, you were, you were actually uh, giving them some change. No, uh, the natural ecosystem that survived was the drug trafficking because the, the, the middle class purchased a lot of drugs to prevent uh, entering depression. So you can, in different methods, see. Uh, so I didn't know quite what to do. There was a group in WhatsApp, and Luciano Huki uh, placed me there with the, because of a video. I was, in, and I talked about this uh, discomfort of mine. I don't want to give them food. I want to give them the money, and they do whatever they want. And I went to the supermarket and I bought 50 prepaid uh, cards. So the young people, the youth from the community, uh, were there. I, we went to the the mothers. We registered their credit, and so many of them said, "Well, I never had credit in my life." So credit for you to understand. So uh, people are not believed. It's not just the money. When you give them food you don't is because you don't believe they can manage food uh, uh, or actually to manage money uh, so we gave them uh, cards prepaid cards 
and the crowdfunding was running it was going well we reached 140,000 in five days and then I presented because we had the scope of the mothers they didn't know how to address it so we had a computer so some mothers took uh, two weeks uh, spent two weeks uh, worth of food and then some of them didn't couldn't identify what it was it was so I purchased uh, some raffles and I would, for 15 days no, there was nothing uh, to service them and the ecosystem was left alive this was the most important when I saw that I realized well I want to build a community based bank uh, and then I found 30 leadership center was uh, about 40 people when I asked well, how much do you uh, run with uh, well they donated 3,000 reais we lent to a DJ but then the pandemic came up so 50% was already uh, spent with the pandemic no I don't want uh, to work with 3,000 reais and then a friend of mine said well I know Leandro from Sao Paulo who is doing uh, uh, community banking and then I uh, fell in love with the project so I fell in love and I said Leandro I'm from the third sector 30 years I am going to clean your floor I'm going to do an immersion I going to, I want to make our bank favela venceu and action faith virtue if you are feeling a little bit guilty you can talk about fraternity or love you can say whatever you want but the idea is that people can find themselves and experience have a, a financial experience that has been denied historically I don't need to bring data that when the option was to bring 12 million people from one continent to another the people just wanted results numbers are cold so we neglected human beings and prioritized numbers we want to well, live numbers, warm numbers. We want to warm numbers up in order to provide dignity to people. This is what I want to learn with you. Thank you, José Lito. Reminding you that this debate is just the beginning of a debate of the 2030 agenda and rest assured that there are new songs for new years it's the time to open up to new debates for final considerations final thoughts and it's a great challenge all of us are learning the whole globalized world is learning how to implement SDGs. It's a challenge for the world and for Brazil, which is so creative and generous. Renata, your final thoughts. Then, Rafaela, Joselito, Eduardo Joselito. Thank you for the invitation. You're all invited to know more about Sebrae Delas, access our website to learn more. And uh, well, Fernanda, I'll give the floor to you. Thank you. So I want to conclude. My proposal is an invitation so that we can do the neck test which I will explain it's about looking to the side and look for diversity when we look at the financial universe it has a specific appearance and stereotype it's mostly white men of the same age when we begin to practice the neck test look at both sides and start questioning the lack of diversity in these spaces we begin to transform this reality and this ecosystem second thing second proposal is 
that we understand that affirmative actions are needed and affirmative actions that are based on targets, metrics, and budgets. There needs to be public money. We need to have a target. How long will it take to reach X number? We need also to invest money in this. We can only diversify ecosystems and the reality that we know as financial market when we look at diversity with more intention. This is my invitation and proposal once again. Thank you for the invitation. And you can rely on Conta Black for whatever you need. Thank you, Fernanda. Eduardo Machado. It's a huge pleasure to have participated in this panel. Those who watched or will watch it will change, and I think that's very valuable. Doing the neck test, as Fernanda suggested, and see that to our side there's someone who needs more than support and incentive. It might be someone who needs credit whatever color, whatever gender this person has. I would like to thank IUPDE and congratulate it for opening its doors and so many minds for us to discuss such important topics for the future of our nation. This is what we are discussing, actually. It's a piece of the future. It's what we want to find down the road and that we hope will be better than what we have today. So in this sense, to imagine that in, the, in ABDE's 2030 agenda, there are many proposals for public policies that do not favor minorities. and that take development to where it needs to reach to segments of society that deserve it and that can contribute to the development of our nation. This is the role of each one of our development institutions. And I'm sure that of many institutions that propose to take credit to those who need credit support to get their businesses to grow. It, this is an entrepreneurial country and a country that will create a favorable environment for human, social, and economic growth. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Eduardo. Rafaela. So I'm responsible for finalizing here. Thank you again for the invitation. No doubt, wonderful learning to hear Renat, Eduardo, yourself, Joselito. Very pleased to have participated in this discussion. So I will make an individual provocation. We talked about the responsibility of companies, public entities, and, but the Ninja Turtles is the source of the saying that with great res privileges come great responsibilities. And so what are we doing individually to build a more diverse reality? As agents, political agents, with great capacity to influence our organizations and people around us, how have we been influencing people to change reality, a tool that I really believe in. How can we invest in diversity as managers who can hire people, more diverse people, a diversity of people, 
and it's important for us to look up and see someone who looks like us and to sit opposite someone who looks like us. When we look at women, why don't women get receive investment? Very often because the counterpart, the invest, investor is often a man. And a word that changed my my understanding is that we tend to trust those who look like us. So there's a lot about there's it's a lot about identification with the person who is sitting opposite us, our interlocutor. So it's important to talk about diversity and to have fund managers that are women and black people and um, look at those who make decisions and sign the checks and. Uh, are sitting on the opposite side of the table. For us who are have the privilege of sitting in this chair, what do we do every day to change this reality, not only publicly but also privately? So try to be angel investors and invest in startups and be, become mentors of companies, of uh, people in the labor market. If a door was opened to you, keep the door open for someone else or take someone by the hand and go through the door. Thank you, José Lieto. I think it was Spider-Man who said that, not, not Ninja Turtle. Uh, yeah, so that just shows my age, right? Um, yes. You did say one take someone by the hand, right? And uh, that's beautiful that Akinteki accepted me. And I still can't pronounce the names in English. Right? You're you're talking to someone, and uh, they use a lot of terms in English. It, economic jargon sounds a lot like English, but anyway, I'm. Sorry if, well, I come from the front and I can see people who are hungry, people who want to participate in society in a huge battle to be citizens. I've always been marginal but never criminal. People where I come from, they are an, on the margin, they are not criminals and so and everybody is involved in the informal market there but um, I'd like to thank BDE for the invitation Akinteki and my sisters and my brother thank you for allowing me to participate in this learning space thank you before ending the session I want to present the video of cases of ABD because it's very important this agenda of experiences and sharing of what's going on to implement the policy of the ESG and SDGs. My name is Juliana Aquino Teixeira, I'm a psychologist and microentrepreneur in Pimenteiras, my shop is the first specializing in makeup and um, fake jewelry. I am, I live in Benigina. I work in this mini vegetable patch, which provides, which supports my family. And I sell my produce here to different shops in the city. Just as Antonio's vegetable shop and uh, Juliana's shop, more than 1,600 enterprises were contemplated by financing by Piauí Fomento. It wasn't as bureaucratic as people say. It was really easy and we were able to obtain very credit with very accessible interest rates. For entrepreneur, it's real support. Piauí Fomento provides credit to anyone who lives from their own business in the informal sector and also micro and small enterprises. 
the credit money from Pio e Fomento will be applied to in, in security, uh, cameras and uh, screens and uh, to increase safety and security. In 2021, more than 29 million reais were provided in new loan operations. Now we Fomento is growing at a fast pace. The go governor, Wellington, uh, allocated resources to the agency, and this is allowing the agency to have its capitalization and resources to finance, especially small entrepreneurs. The credit from Piauí Fomento is well, it provides more, it provides safer working capital. And the most important is that the credit mm -hmm. makes us want to work because we have space to pay. And I'm very proud and pleased with the work and uh, the achievements that I have had. I'm Denise Rocha Domingues, President of the Development Agency. It's a great pleasure to get back to the Brazilian Development, For, uh, Development Forum, ABD, to continue this state in the north of the country with a great demand for action related to sustainability. And in this requirement, plus the uh, development agency has been looking for actions for diversification and social inclusion and we've opened several fronts of work 139 municipalities we can uh, we go to smaller cities and we offer credit for those uh, we who cannot have access to credit by from banks and the other problem is uh, digital access it can all uh, people can also in their cell phones or computers to uh, have access to credit we have a very interesting line which is uh, for women because women today are entrepreneurs and sometimes they uh, pay for everything in their homes and uh, we have a great action and we need to expand uh, the project because it provided a great result. We have smaller rates and uh, long uh, terms. One other action which is very interesting is the uh, development fund for popular uh, credit. We've uh, allowed for informal workers, so for people who work as waiters or bricklayers, we're working them in the pandemic, helping them work with subsidized rates. We also, we're also going back to provide service to family farmers. In the state, this is a very strong uh, demand because there are many farmers who have uh, family farming and they survive from uh, the fruits of their labor. So we have subsidized interest rates t for them to have access to credit. And something very interesting uh, with this popular uh, credit is that we have a project uh, of the entrepreneur youth in a partnership with Besouro Fomento Social. They offer free of charge uh, training courses for young people and we're the first agency to help them financially and uh, there is another development agency doing that as well but we generated resources in the whole state and we are the only agency that uh, decided to uh, support them so we believe in young entrepreneurs and we believe that they uh, will choose the best project from uh, everything that was presented, they will select uh, 300 projects that are good projects, that are uh, entrepreneurship projects, and will fund them with uh, waiting periods and subsidized rates uh, to include 
that youth into the market. So uh, it has been a small and medium enterprise dedicated, but we also work with uh, culturism and with FINAP to also provide service to the industries of innovation, solar, uh, which is a form of sustainability within the state. We are incentivizing with FINAP. And to close, I want to thank and say that the agency and the government are always in search of new opportunities for the development of entrepreneurs from, from Tocantins. The development agency of the state of Pernambuco is relatively young and it has been founded in 2011, so it is uh, 11 years old. In 2019, it was reformed. Despite the great advances of the state of Pernambuco uh, in the economy of the state of Pernambuco in that period, we, was, we became one of the most industrialized states in the northeast of Brazil. We have one of the only uh, automobile industries in the region, and but we still have a lot of workers, informal workers in small uh, businesses. And that being the case, in 2019, we reformed our institution and launched a program of guided microcredit, which is a, a kind of community credit. Uh, this uh, program was very successful since its uh, release. We've uh, ran 19,000 operations with 44 million reais being uh, granted as credit. And I'm very happy to say that there is a very strong demand for it. 65% of borrowers of credit are uh, entrepreneurs in our state. And also a matter for uh, a, an argument for a regionalization, Pernambuco is in the semi-arid region of the country. And in this region we have Sertão, which is a region with less opportunities uh, than in the metropolitan regions or regions that are closer to the uh, to to the shore and uh, we've made more than five fifty five hundred operations reaching 13 million reais so we're reaching out to those who are usually invisible to the national financial system so i'm very happy to say that we from the development agency of the city of Pernambuco have reached all regions. Uh, we have 162 cities uh, from the 180 to in the state of Pernambuco uh, having access to popular credit. Looking at the small and informal businesses that also make a difference in our history. In the history of Brazil, there is a famous uh, war called the War of Mascaches between Recife and Olinda. These were precisely these people who were in the streets negotiating and trading. So we have been supporting the SMEs in the state of Pernambuco. I'd like to thank all of the speakers and finish by saying that the national development system has a fundamental role in this agenda of diversity, inclusion and entrepreneurship. Thank you very much.